Okay, so we'll deal with graphs of functions. And again, um, part of this section we covered uh, when I talked about section 2.1, kind of mistakenly throwing the vertical line test in that section. So it's really supposed to be for this section. Um, so I won't go through all the details again. But just remember with the vertical line test, uh, I'll write that up here. Just remember with that that you're essentially testing to see if a graph represents a function and you look to see how many times vertical lines cross the graph. Um, if any vertical line were to cross the graph more than once, the graph does not represent a function. Okay? Um, an example of something like that might be a graph that looks something like this, some squiggly line at our curve, something like that. And in this example, there's a vertical line. I'll draw it in here. Uh, maybe I'll draw it in another color. Uh, I can find a vertical line that intersects the graph more than once. Okay, the one that I drew in green actually intersects at three different points, um, but it only has to intersect twice, two or more times. Okay, and as soon as that occurs, this is no longer a function. because it fails the vertical line test. And I'll often abbreviate vertical line test as VLT, um, just so I'm not writing all that out. Okay, so, um, so that fails the vertical line test, it's not a function. Remember a function is defined uh, so that every domain value or input corresponds to exactly one output from the range, okay? So for a function, every uh, input, those are the, the values from the domain or the x, right? So I'm trying to, trying to relate all these things together. So you've got your x values, which are uh, part of the domain. The domain is all those values, inputs. Uh, the inputs are things you're plugging in for x, we also call that the, the values of the independent variable. Okay, so you've got input, independent variable, domain, and x. Those three, those four things usually all go together, okay? Um, so every input corresponds to exactly one output. Okay, so that's the definition of a function again from last time. Okay, so maybe just a quick summary so that you guys can kind of wrap your heads around this. I know, it, um, you know there's a lot to remember here um, in terms of definitions, stuff like that. So um, to, to recall the x values, okay, the x values um, are going to correspond to the independent variable. and the input and the domain. Remember the domain is a set of all the values uh, for x, okay, or the independent variable. Um, the y values correspond to the outputs of things you get out of a function. Um, so maybe I'll write that in another color here. So the, the y values, uh, those are the dependent variable. Uh, or the output, because that's what comes out of the function. And then we correspond all of those values um, into what we call the range. The set of all those values is called the range. Okay. So we've got the x values and the y values. These are different names in different contexts for uh, those two variables, okay? Okay, um, so anyway, the vertical line test, that's just a quick summary of the vertical line test. Um, if every vertical line that you could possibly draw goes to the graph zero or one time, then you have a function, okay? 
So that's essentially what the vertical line test says. Um, an example where you have a function, um, just a simple one. We saw a bit last time. Well, yeah, this is just a line, right? This is a line slope uh, going up uh, to the right. And so every vertical line you could possibly draw through that graph intersects exactly one time. So that represents a function because uh, it never intersects more than once. So this is a function because it passes the vertical line test. Okay. All right. So just a quick summary of the vertical line test and what we talked about with functions, kind of a review from 2.1. Um, okay. Now, we're going to look at a little bit more detail on these functions. Uh, specifically, we're going to get into the domain and the range. So we're going to be able to identify from the graph what the domain and the range are. And then we're going to identify um, uh, specific function values based upon the points on the graph. Okay. Um, okay. So let's uh, let's draw a quick. I'll sketch a quick graph up here. Uh, give you some ideas of what I'm talking about. Okay. So here's my x, y axes, and let's say I had a graph um, that you know maybe starts at a point. I'll put it over here in the second quadrant. Maybe that point is at negative 2, comma 5. I'll just give it some coordinates. Um, and then maybe it dips down, hits the origin, comes back up, and just kind of shoots off indefinitely out to the right. I don't know. I'm just making something up here. Okay. Um, and so it does cross here at 0, 0. It's kind of the low point on the graph I'm drawing. Okay. So, um, so from this graph, we can identify a bunch of things. First of all, um, I might ask, is this a function? And you would use the vertical line test. Well, every vertical line I possibly draw, I'm just using my marker as a vertical line, always crosses the graph one time. Or vertical lines out here on the left actually cross zero times, and that's okay. Okay, so zero or one doesn't matter. So we would say this is a function. Again, because it passes the vertical line test. Okay. All right. So now the 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 next question would be, what are the domain and range? Okay, let's focus on the domain. Um, remember, the domain is going to be all of the x values that correspond to points in this graph. So this graph covers a certain portion of the x-axis. And the portion of the x-axis covered by this graph are going to be uh, values in the domain. Um, for instance, 0, 0. Well, 0, the x value there, is in the domain because the graph is covering that. Um, all x values to the right, so all the positive values, are going to be covered by the graph. So every value over here corresponds to a point on the graph. And so every x value that has a corresponding point on the graph is going to be in the domain. In our case, the farthest left that this graph goes is negative 2. Right? It doesn't go past negative 2. But everything from negative 2 to the right is covered by the graph. Okay? So I can use an interval notation. fall asleep all the time here. Um, so I can use interval notation to uh, identify that uh, region from negative 2 to infinity, everything covered by the graph in the x direction. So I start negative 2 on the left, infinity on the right, that's our left and right uh, endpoints, 
the infinity, again, in interval form, always gets a parenthesis because infinity is not actually a number you can put in the set. It's a, it's a concept that the set goes on indefinitely and never actually ends. Uh, the negative 2, however, is a number. And in our case, I shaded in that circle, that endpoint, and so that represents the point uh, being included. And so I want to use a bracket on that negative 2. Okay? So going back to what we studied in Chapter 1 with set notation and interval notation, um, we want to include the negative 2. Now, I could have just as easily put an open circle there. And if I did an open circle, then I would have put a parenthesis here because open circles represent not including the endpoint. Um, you could also represent this in set form, just as a quick refresher uh, back to, to chapter one. You could represent this as the set of all values of x. Uh, let's get rid of this for a moment. Set of all values of x such that x is greater than or equal to negative 2. Okay, so remember in set building notation you have your uh, x value because we're talking about domain, so it's got to be x's. When we get to a range, we'll call them y's. And the x values are all greater than or equal to negative 2. That's the property that all the numbers have that are in the domain. Uh, we look at range now. With the range, we're talking about y values. We're going vertical now. And so there are certain y values covered by this graph. Um, so instead of looking left to right, we look up down. I'll get rid of some of this marking here. OK, so um, when we look vertically, it's very quick to identify numbers that are not in the range anything not covered by the graph. So anything down here below the origin is not, in the, is not on the graph. It doesn't correspond to a point on the graph. And so that stuff, the negative numbers, are not going to be included. Um, when we look vertically, though, this graph covers the entire y-axis in the positive side, right? This arrow here um, is going up and to the right indefinitely. And so everything up above the... Uh, x-axis is being included. Um, so I'm going to include all positive numbers, but I also want to include 0 because it does dip down and touch that point. So we're going to start at 0, go up to infinity. That's going to be the interval form of the range from 0 to infinity. Again, not including the infinity, but including the 0 because it is a point on the graph. Uh, these are, again, the y values. Uh, and if I wanted to represent that in set form, I would use the variable y rather than the variable x because the range always corresponds to the y here. Um, and then I'm going to have y greater than or equal to 0. Okay. All right. So that gives me a domain and a range for this one. Um, so again, with the domain, it's all the values on the x-axis that correspond to points on the graph. And for the range, it's all the values on the y-axis that correspond to points on the graph. Okay, so here, the x values, um, all, you know, if you took all these points and just dropped them down to the x-axis, the region on the x-axis here that's covered by the graph corresponds to the domain. And if you took every point and slid them over to the y-axis, then that interval on the y-axis going up corresponds to the values in the range. Okay? So it's kind of like casting a shadow on the axis. OK, so that gives you some idea of domain and range. Now, we, have, uh, we can look at specific function values based upon points on the graph. Um, if this graph represents the function f of x, remember we had f of x equals and then some expression of x, um, we can look at individual function inputs and outputs based upon points that we know. 
Um, I only put two points on here, um, but any of these points could give me a corresponding function value. Let's just focus on the two that I wrote in here. Um, on the left here, I know that the point negative 2, 5 is on the graph. And so that tells me that f of negative 2, negative 2 being the input or the x value, because it's in the parentheses, is equal to the output, which is 5. Now, I don't actually have an equation. I don't know the equation that would work for this graph. I just drew something random up here. Um, and so I don't even need to calculate anything. I'm simply looking at inputs versus outputs. Okay, so whatever's in the parentheses is your x value. Whatever's not in the parentheses is your y value. So input, output, in parentheses, out of parentheses. That's all I always remember. Uh, same thing with 0, 0. Okay, so in the, this case, f of 0, 0 being the input of x, input of x corresponds to an output of y, which is also 0. Okay, so you have 0, 0. Input zero, output zero, um, so f of zero is zero. Here's your x value, here's your y value. Okay, so we have our x, and we have our y, and here we have our x and our corresponding y. Okay. Um, so maybe I'll run through one more example. Um, and draw another graph that kind of makes sense here. Okay, uh, let's say we had a graph. That starts at negative 4, 0, um, and just goes kind of up to the right. Like this, and I'll throw a few extra points on there. Let's go with uh, negative 3, comma 1, and 0, comma 2. So I've got three points on this graph. Um, again, I can identify all, uh, all, I guess, all of the features, the domain, the range, and whether it's a function. So those are three kind of typical questions you might be asked based upon a graph. So is this a function? Well, the answer is if I can draw vertical lines and none of them hit twice, right? So to draw my vertical lines in here, and of course, I'm always hitting the graph one time up to here, and then after that, I'm hitting the graph zero times, and that's okay, as long as it doesn't go more than once. So this is definitely a function. Again, because it passes the vertical, vertical line test, right? So that's your rationale is good enough. Um, we look at domain and range. Think about domain again. Those are the x values. I'm going to repeat. You guys are going to get tired of me saying this. The domain is the x. It's on the x-axis. It's the inputs. Da, da, da. I'm always trying to relate those because I think the more you hear it, um, the more it gets ingrained in your brain. So, um, so the domain then is all the x values covered by this graph. And if, again, you think about just a shadow being cast on the x-axis, it's where all these points drop to. And, of course, it's going to start here at negative 4. That's our furthest left. And it's going to extend to infinity out to the right because it goes out indefinitely to the right. So uh, we're going to go with negative 4 to infinity. Um, again, we include the negative 4 because I shaded that point in. We don't include infinity because it's not actually a number to put in the set. Uh, the range, uh, well, the range is going to start, it's all the y values, again, and so it's going to start at 0, and it's going to go up to infinity because this arrow is going both up and to the right, even though it looks like it's going more to the right, 
um, it is going up um, as well. And so the range will start at zero and go up to infinity. Uh, let's see. So let's see. Let, oh, the next thing I want to do is talk about function values. And so we have uh, f of, uh, I guess we could find a few things f of negative 4, f of negative 3, and f of 0. Right? We could find all three of these things because they're all on the graph. Uh, f of negative 4, negative 4 is again the input. So it's going to be your x value, and you want to write out as the output the corresponding y value, which is 0. Here. So f of negative 4 is 0. Uh, f of negative 3, again, negative 3 is the input. You want the corresponding output, which is 1. And f of 0, well, 0 is the input of, for x. The corresponding output is, of course, 2. So. We can, uh, we can find function values or outputs based upon certain inputs. Um, you may also be asked, this is an interesting question, worded a little bit differently. Um, maybe I'll replace the bottom one. I might say something like uh, find f of x such that... Uh, Oh no, sorry. Find x. I wrote that wrong. Find x such that f of x is equal to 2. And so what, what you're saying here then is you want to find the output that corresponds to an I'm sorry, you said that wrong too. Uh, you want to find the input that corresponds to an output of 2. So you go to the graph and you look at the output of 2 and you're going to say, well, an output of 2 corresponds to an input of 0, so the x value is 0 for that. Okay. Um, it is also possible to have more than one answer because you could have more than one input going to the same output. That's actually okay for a function. So an example, an example of that... Uh, hmm. Maybe something like this right here. It's sort of a curve, a U shape, and it's got actually let's uh, let's put an open circle on one side and a closed circle on the other. Okay, um, and I'll put a few points on here. Oh, maybe this point here is at negative 3, comma 3. And this one here, put it at negative 2, 0. Down here, maybe that one is at, oh, yeah, that's right. Let's put that one at 0, comma, negative 3. Down here, maybe that's at 1, comma, negative 4. Uh, that one there we'll put at four comma zero, and this guy here we'll put it at like four point five comma one or something like that. I don't know. I'm making these up as we go, so um, that's not too bad. They're just random points, you know. I, they kind of look good on the graph. So um, in this case, I'll ask a few questions. Maybe we'll look for it. We'll say is uh, this a function, and then I might say y slash y not. Okay, so I'm, this is how you might see this on a test. Um, you know, it would be worded a little bit nicer and structured a little nicer on the page, but something like that. You may also see this on my math lab. Um, let's say find the domain. Let's say find the range, actually let's write that a little higher, I need more space. 
on then I might say something like find f of one. I might say find f of uh, negative three. I might say find x such that f of x is equal to zero. All right, so there's a few questions that you may have to answer or something structured like this. Um, but I wanted you to first explain whether this is a function or not. Again, vertical line test. Um, you know, I'm going to just sketch in here. Okay, maybe not sketch, but just line up my pencil or whatever I'm using as a vertical line, slide it across, and of course, it always intersects once, right? Unless you're out here on the left, extreme left or the extreme right, in which case it's none, but that's okay. Zero, one is okay as long as it's not more than one. So this is a function. I'll write the answers in green. Um, is a function uh, because uh, passes vertical line test. Okay, I'm being a little sloppy with my grammar here, um, but just, you know, you want to put that in a proper sentence and make it make sense. Uh, find the domain. Well, the domain, again, those are the x values, the inputs. So for the domain, that's all the values if you brought the points up or down to the uh, x-axis. It's everything covered by the graph, right? Every x value that corresponds to a point on the graph. And so you'd start the farthest extreme left is negative 2. The extreme right is, well, I guess, 4.5, right? It goes up to that open circle. So negative, no, I'm sorry, negative 3 is the far left. Sorry. Um, let's run that. So you would go with negative 3 up to 4.5. Um, the negative 3 is included because that's a solid circle. The 4.5 is not because I put an open circle there. So I put a parenthesis on the 4.5. Uh, the range, I'll do the range in red. The range corresponds to all the values on the y axis that are covered by this graph also. So if you were to draw lines over to the y-axis, it's everything covered from bottom, extreme bottom, to the extreme top, and everything in between. Um, in this case, uh, we start down here. The low point is at negative 4. There's always y values, right? So the range starts at negative 4, goes all the way up to 3, and I am going to include the negative 4 because that's an actual point on the graph. I'm also going to include the 3 because it also uh, is an actual point on the graph that is shaded in. Uh, then f of 1, let's go through and identify each of those. Um, well, 1 is the input, that's the x value. Um, that corresponds, to, so 1 is, I want to that 1. Um, so 1, negative 4, I guess, is the output. Okay, so f of 1 is negative 4. It's the output corresponding to an input of 1. F of negative 3, well, again, you plug in the negative 3, go up to the graph, that's the 3 output. So the output that corresponds to an input of negative 3 is positive 3. And then find x such that f of x is 0. Well, here the output is 0. So you want to find inputs that make the output 0. Well, there's two points. Right, there's two points that have an output of zero. They are at negative two zero and at four zero. They happen to be the x-intercepts. And so both of those are going to be the x value. So I would say x equals negative two and four. Now my math lab will probably have you 
do like some comma separated thing and so you probably have to type in like maybe two comma four or something like that um just as a list so okay 